Good morning, squad. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Mad Missy Sports Morning Show, the number one spot for everything sports talk, sports news, sports debate in the morning. And our rundown today is going to start off recapping Monday Night Football. The Raiders going for two. Another questionable um, rough in the passer call. And then are the Raiders done? We got to touch on that. Matt Rule being fired. Got to speak on that. And then one week away from tip off to the regular season for the NBA. And we got to speak on what are the one key factors for the Sixers and the Clippers to finally get over that hump and get to a finals, possibly this year? Let's get into it. Now let's go back to last night and Monday Night Football. What a great game. Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's just start off with my big take and what, uh, what we've seen from that game. Yesterday, it was just a clear indication of Patrick Mahomes' greatness again he exerted his his greatness and how they're they will never back down down 17 fighting back clawing back getting back within what i think 10 points or seven points before half i think it was 10 7 at halftime and they got a nonsense roughing the passer call called on them we're gonna speak on that later but um yeah it's just the greatness of patrick mahomes their running game is a lot better that's one thing that was shown and they're creating creating turnovers so for me it was just a uh, chiefs are the class of the afc they're still not backing down they're still that same old team that can come back from down 17 0 up against a high powered offense so that was just to me classic Patrick Mahomes, classic Kansas City Chiefs. And you look at just how the Raiders started to falter on third down coming down the stretch of the game. Once they got that 17 point lead, it was almost like they couldn't hit those third downs no more. And then you had that critical third down, third and what was that, third and one with Devontae Adams. In my opinion, that was a catch. I felt like he got the ball in both hands, toe tap both feet, but they saying it wasn't control with the left foot down. I disagree. I thought that was a catch, but that shouldn't have been as important as it was because you don't go for two when there's four minutes left in the fourth quarter and you're going up against Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. You just don't. It's stupid. It like when people are saying like they get it. It's four minutes left in the game. Like like why do y'all keep saying it like the game is about to end or something like that? Like I can understand if it's. 30 seconds under a minute or something like that. Yeah, you go for two. You you never know what can happen. A, a, a big sack and the game is over. No. The, the Actually, the Chiefs could have went out there, went three and out, kicked the ball off, tried to stop y'all again, and then got the ball back with four minutes left. They could have got, they could have squeezed out two more possessions if they needed to. So kicking a, or going for two and trying to go up one at that point was just, just to go up one at that point because at the end of the day, you have no confidence that you're going to keep that one-point lead against Patrick Mahomes. You just don't. And if you say you do, you're lying. So to me, you eliminated your team's opportunity to come down and have a sense of just executing instead of a sense of urgency because they were down one. So you take the ball out of your defense's hands and I, I don't know. It's just to me, you go for the you go for the tie right there. You don't know what's gonna happen. Max Crosby out there, Chandler, you know what I'm saying, Chandler Jones. So like don't I don't know. Just don't put yourself behind the eight ball and now you press it. And now, oh, you miss a fourth down, it's game over. You miss a third down, it's game over. You get what I'm saying? Like, no, don't 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 put yourself in that predicament if you don't have to. Why put yourself why why box yourself in that corner if you don't have to? I just don't get it. With four minutes left in the entire game. That's just ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. But I gotta speak on this. Did Tua and the Miami Dolphins ruin the NFL? Did they ruin football? I'ma say no, but they they're they're on a path of doing it. If they start calling these penalties for all the quarterbacks, because I want to point this out. Derek Carr, Tom Brady, they got some iffy rough in the passer calls. Didn't Teddy Bridgewater get hurt against the New York Jets by Sauce Gardner? The only penalty the only penalty that was called on that play was intentional grounding. And he was out the game. He got knocked out the game. He got blasted by Sauce Gardner. You feel what I'm saying? No penalty, no roughing the passer, no unnecessary roughness, no oh you suplex them into the into the turf. Is it because it's a corner? Is it because it was a black quarterback? I'ma say it was because of I'ma say it was because it was a black quarterback in my opinion. Because when you look at the Tom Brady hit and you look at the Derek Carr hit, those hits were a lot less egregious than the hit that Teddy Bridgewater took. Now, you can say it's Teddy Bridgewater, you know what I'm saying, jumping up, trying to throw the ball away, this, that, and the third. But still, Teddy Bridgewater, out of all three of those quarterbacks, he's the one that got knocked out. He's the one that had to go through concussion protocols. 
He's the one that didn't return to the game. And he's the one that didn't get a penalty called on him. And he's the black quarterback. And he's not that mobile. So don't give me, oh, it's a mobile quarterback. No, it's the black quarterback thing. It's the black quarterback thing. Like, that's 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 just ridiculous to me. If y'all gonna call it like that, call it like that with everybody. How does, I just don't see how Tom Brady and Derek Carr, their penalties help them extend leads or get a victory. And Teddy Bridgewater gets blasted out the game and doesn't get a penalty. And then y'all don't want to say that it, it, it has nothing to do with race? Come on, man. C come on, man. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. And when you think about it, Teddy Bridgewater is way more to the size of a Tua Tagovailoa than big Derek Carr and big Tom Brady. Both of those dudes like 6'4". You fool what I'm saying? I, I don't even want to get into it, but that clear distinction between the penalties that were called between Tom Brady and Derek Carr and then Teddy Bridgewater not getting one, actually, they did call it. They did call a penalty. They called intentional grounding. You feel what I'm saying? So, to me, the NFL is going down a, a, a terrible path right now. They have to implement something to rein this stuff back, especially when it comes to the, the clear difference in the way they're viewing black quarterbacks and the way they're viewing white quarterbacks. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Let's move on. Matt Roll being fired. The only thing I want to speak on is this man getting fired and getting $40 million after a lifetime contract. To me, I just don't know what the Carolina Panthers were thinking in general by giving a dude that had no NFL experience, coaching experience, coordinator experience in the NFL, uh, basically a lifetime contract to turn them around. So to me, it was stupid. They came back around, had to bite the bullet, had, had to eat up. 40 million dollars Matt Rule is probably going to go back to college football maybe Oklahoma maybe Wisconsin um I don't know Matt Rule is uh, um he's almost like I wouldn't say Urban Meyer because Urban Meyer was a complete travesty that man was a circus down there in Jacksonville but um yeah I I think Matt Rule is more so like a, a Nick Saban Urban Meyer type where it's just he he connects better with the younger developing athletes more than the athletes that get paid. So, yeah, I think he'll go back to college football. He'll probably do well, just like Chip Kelly's doing well with UCLA now. And you, I mean, we seen Chip Kelly. He he was absolutely tanking after a while after those what those first two seasons with the Eagles. So he was absolutely putrid after that. He was garbage with my Niners. Oh my goodness, I don't even want to speak about that. But yeah, Matt Rose probably going to get back to college football get back to winning and uh, rebuild his legacy. $40 million to get fired though, sheesh. I'm, I'm trying to be a coach, holla at me. You feel what I'm saying? I can get these dudes to run, you know what I mean? But let's move on to the NBA and with us being one week away from the tip off to the regular season of NBA basketball, I gotta speak on the Clippers and the Sixers specifically and I wanna touch on what are the number one factors for those two teams to get over, to, to finally get over the hump. When you think about the Sixers, they've be, been revamping, revamping, revamping this roster around Joel B, trying to get over that, trying to get, a, get over that hump that they were right on the cusp of getting over before Kawhi hit the, what do you, what do you, ah, the, the, the triple, you know what I'm saying, doinker, you know what I mean? Before Kawhi hit that, they were right there, but you think about they haven't been close ever since. To me, the number one thing with the Philadelphia 76ers is just health, health, health. You get what I'm saying? Like, I felt like if, if MB comes in last year and he's more healthy, they have a better shot. Or not comes in, but if he doesn't get hurt in that first round series, they have a better shot of competing with the Miami Heat. So they have to stay healthy. They have to be a lot smarter. And they need James Harden to not just, he can't be a 10 and 10 guy. You know what I'm saying? They they need 20 and 10. You feel me? So don't go out there. Don't try to be Steve Nash. No, nah, we don't need you passing up shots. We don't need this, that, and the third. They need that man to score. And with the Clippers, it's the same thing. Health. You think about John Wall. He's been unhealthy the past few years. Paul George has been unhealthy the past few years. Kawhi Leonard has been unhealthy the past few years. And But I feel like over those past few years, Teron Lue has shown that he is an elite head coach in the NBA. So... To, for them, it's just the health. They they have to stay healthy. I don't know if they will be able to, but they have to stay healthy. But that West is stacked. They coming back. But you also got the Denver Nuggets that are coming back very healthy with Michael Porter Jr. being uh, healthy and Jamal Murray coming back. So listen, it's, it's not going to be easy in that West. But I feel like for the Clippers, they definitely have to focus on health, nutrition, and just being out there and building continuity. Like I said, even with, uh, I, I believe the Brooklyn Nets I was speaking on, they can't have dudes playing half a season, playing 60% of the games. 
And then thinking they gonna go out there and compete against the Nuggets if they play uh, like 70 games together. Think they gonna compete against the Warriors if they play 70 games together. Compete against Memphis if they play 70 games together. They're not. That continuity takes you a long way. And, and talent, you're just not gonna come in and over talent dudes. You're just not. So for me, it's gonna be the health with both teams and specifically with the Sixers, they need James Harden to be a 20 and 10 guy. They need him to score and facilitate. You get me? So let me know what y'all think. This is episode 30, Mad Music Sports Morning Show. Like, comment, share, subscribe, listen, alert. Mizzy World Entertainment, have a productive day today. Gang.